How's it going guys? Cheese here at Cheese on Everything. And no, this isn't the new ride. I'm just at work. As some of you know, I am a coach driver at my full-time job. But what you might not know is that we get sent all over the place and sometimes into the middle of nowhere. And so in order to get food, it's not like I can take that bus into a drive-thru. I needed another mode of transportation. And this is what I got, the one wheel pint. So I was deciding between a one wheel and a boosted board. Obviously you guys know that boosted board's out of business. So with the bad roads of Toronto, this was my preferred choice. As an avid snowboarder, our seasons are getting shorter and shorter every year. And I just want something that rides exactly the same as a snowboard. And I'm happy to report that this board is exactly that. I can't even believe how Future Motion figured out the formula for this. Even on the sidewalks with all those lines, you barely even feel a thing. I was so amped about riding this board that I couldn't even wait to do the unboxing. So I've only been riding this thing for a week and I'm absolutely falling in love with it. So this being 23 pounds is not too heavy. It's easy for me to carry especially with that mag handle. This can go over pavement, walkways, rocky areas, grass, anything you pretty much throw at it, it can go over. The 10 to 13 kilometers equate to about an hour to an hour and a half of riding, depending on the terrain. So that's more than enough time for me to go grab food or anything I need and come back to the bus. Now that I'm downtown, I'm gonna test out the agility of this one wheel by going down to Lakeshore where there's a lot of foot traffic, cyclists, and other electric vehicles. As you can see here, I'm on the sidewalk going the same pace as pedestrians and the board isn't wobbly or unstable at all. Even though the pavement is uneven, you can still maintain balance with just a little bit of adjustments. Once you get used to riding this thing, it becomes very natural and it becomes a part of your body. And when you really need to power that 10.5 inch wheel and the 750 watt motor really gives you the power to accelerate past anything that's in your way. As demonstrated here as I pass the two pedestrians. You notice that this board is so quiet they didn't even realize I was behind them until they looked back. Even on this loud boardwalk it didn't make too much noise so you can rest assured if you ride this at night that you won't be waking the neighbors. There are LEDs on both sides of this board. The rear lights are a really nice touch for motorists to know of your presence on the road. However, I do feel like the front lights are a little bit inadequate because even riding downtown at night, I couldn't really see the bumps on the road. So that's an area where they could possibly improve on if they make a version two. All right, so I've been riding this board for about a month now. I've done 200 kilometers on it. I've been riding it every single day and I absolutely love it. I was kind of skeptical of buying this at first because it was so expensive and I didn't know if it was just a fad and I was gonna not use it after a while but I've been carrying this thing to work every day and it hasn't been a nuisance or annoying at all. I actually forgot to bring it one day because I was rushing out to work and I was absolutely missing it the whole day when I was on my breaks because without this I can't get anywhere. But let me just take you through some of the app features because I never really talked about that. Uh, this app is actually very intuitive. Um, the UI is very clear and there's no second guessing what is what. Uh, it shows you the speed, the trip life, uh, the battery range, the regen and the usage. And it has three profiles. You start off with Redwood, which is kind of a beginner mode. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using it at all because it doesn't really give you enough power. I found that when I was learning on Redwood, it actually hindered my learning performance. I currently ride on Skyline, which is the most aggressive profile. I found that it gave the motor the most amount of torque to accelerate you when you need it or to make those tight turns and it'll just hold the grip for you. You also got two other profiles, which is Pacific and Elevated. With Pacific, it felt like I had to really lean forward for it to go. Elevated is just a profile for you to go up hills, which I didn't really find that useful because I, th I think that Skyline could actually do it all. Some other features are the light mode, which you can just tap the screen and it'll turn on and off. Uh, it's good for nighttime. And there's also a GPS feature, which lets you create a new ride and tracks wherever you're going. You can also see other people in the neighborhoods with uh, one wheels, which is kind of cool. And there's also a leaderboard which shows you the riders who've rode the most. 
the feature is the simple stop which I didn't really talk about uh, I leave it on and basically what it is is you just tilt backwards when you want to stop and it will just let you down slowly with the older one wheels you either had to jump off the board completely or just take your heel off one of the pads so that it disengages but with the new simple stop you can just lean back and the board will just let you down slowly which is a feature I really liked when I was riding downtown especially in the bike lanes with other cyclists there so I can just lean back and then stop and wait like everybody else. So with all those great features, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is the price. It is expensive at $1,300. Uh, right now you can get it online for that price. You might end up having to pay custom fees uh, as I did. I paid an extra 200 bucks to FedEx. But if you were to buy it here at the local shops, it's going to cost you $1,500 anyway. So either way, you're paying around the same. To compare this to other electric vehicles, they're all floating around the $1,000 Canadian range. There are a couple of scooters around five, 600 bucks, but it definitely can't go into a lot of the terrain that this can handle. Overall, I think this is the most fun and the most versatile electric vehicle on the market today. I might think about changing the tire to a treaded tire when winter comes and see how this thing performs in the winter time. But for now, I do have a couple of accessories coming in. So stay tuned, hit subscribe, like this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.